He's saying, actually, you don't have to look out for number one because you have a heavenly father who is looking out for you. And because he loves you, now you are invited to live in the ethical love. We are hurting people and we're living in a hurting world and that's natural, but forgiveness is supernatural and that's our journey. We're learning now to, uh, in the process of forgive, to recall the hurt in a redemptive way and then to empathize with the person that hurt us. And the choice that I wanna set before you and me today is this, I can treat other people based on the way that they treat me or I can treat other people based on the way that God treats me. This is a profound and fundamental, brilliant insight and offer that Jesus brings to the human race. I want to read uh, several statements from Matthew from his famous Sermon on the Mount. He says, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. If anybody wants to sue you, take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anybody forces you to go one mile, go with them too. Give to the one who asks you. Do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. And then verse 40, 43 in chapter 5, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your, heavenly, of your Father in heaven. Because that's what he does. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love only those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Now, a word here, Nicholas Waltersdorf writes about this in his book, Justice and Love. What Jesus is doing here fundamentally is rejecting what Waltersdorf calls the reciprocity code. And the reciprocity code is generally what governs human behavior. It was prominent in the ancient world. It's prominent in our world. The idea is you got to look out for yourself. You got to take care of number one. And therefore you want to keep accounts even. If somebody is good to you, then you be good to them. If somebody does something bad to you, then you get even with them. You do something bad to them. You face life on the basis of reciprocity. And what Jesus is doing in these remarkable words is utterly rejecting the reciprocity code as the basis for human life. He is offering an alternative. He's saying, actually, you don't have to look out for number one because you have a heavenly father who is looking out for you. And because he loves you, now you are invited to live in the ethical love. I am invited, you are invited. This is why forgiveness is so core to scripture and so core to the teachings of Jesus. We are invited to approach other people with a posture of love, that is to will their good. Now, it's not always easy or simple how to apply this, but it's a consistent orientation. And even if somebody does badly to me, the invitation is not to live any longer in the ethic of reciprocity. I'll get even with you but to will their good, no matter what they have done for me. This is very unusual in our world. As you may know, social psychology teaches, uh, when it comes to whether or not I like other people, the, the second biggest factor is, are they close to me? Am I hanging around that much? The number one factor, if I like other people is, do I think other people like me? And this rejecting of the reciprocity code runs throughout scripture. So Jesus' friend Peter says, 1 Peter 3, 9, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. You understand this is not talking about just isolated bits of behavior. This is the orientation of my heart to become the kind of person that genuinely loves and empathizes and wants the good for other people. 1 Thessalonians 5.15, make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do good for each other and for everyone else. Romans chapter 12, uh, numerous times Paul talks about this. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Verse 17, don't pay anyone evil for evil. Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil. What does it mean to be overcome by evil? Well, it means to live under the reciprocity code. 
and who want to indulge to want evil for somebody else when they have wanted evil for me. And the invitation, see, is a completely different way of life. This is incredibly challenging to us. Ev Worthington talks about the injustice gap, that there'll be times when um, things are not the way that I want them to be. The gap is the, the chasm between how things are and how the, I want them to be, and it drives us to try to pursue justice. Sometimes the injustice gap may be quite small. Uh, I got a car one time, true story, and for some reason there was a problem with the gas tank so you couldn't put gas in it. You'd put the nozzle in and it would just click off automatically. And I know nothing about cars, so I had several people try to check it out. They couldn't do anything. I took it to the dealer and when I brought it in, the guy who met me there said, most likely this is user error. You understand user error? Yes, like I don't know how to put gas in a car. So that was a little offense. That was a little hurt. That was not high on the scale. Sometimes there's an enormous injustice gap. And I want to tell you a story about one of those right now. A, a real helpful thing to do when it comes to forgiveness is to have a forgiveness hero. And, and this person is one of them. His name was Chris Carrier. Story was in the New York Times. You can Google him, read about him in other places. When he was 10 years old, uh, he was kidnapped and an ice pick driven through his head. He was shot, the bullet went in one temple, came out the other temple, he basically left for dead. He's found several days later, still alive, cigarette burns on his body. 22 years later, the assailant was never caught. 22 years later, the police came to him and said, we know who did this to you. We were never able to prove it. So the man has never been punished. He's in the hospital, he's dying. And I don't think he should be allowed to die without being confronted about what he did to you. So Chris Carrier went to the hospital and saw this man, quite shriveled, very much alone, in a hospital bed. But instead of confronting him about what he had done, Chris asked him, who's taking care of you? And McAllister, this man, said, no, I'm taking care of myself. And Chris said, no, you can't take care of yourself. And he began to take care of him. And he found out what food that he liked, and he would bring that to him in the last weeks of his life. And the man actually eventually confessed and acknowledged what he had done to Chris. Um, and it's so interesting what prompted it was, and the police knew about this, but again, they couldn't prove it. What prompted it was that this guy used to work for Chris's dad and uh, got terminated for good reasons. But then inside of him, hurt, unforgiveness festered. I'll get even. And that's how he chose to do it, by striking at his former employer's son. But what Chris said to him was, um, I don't hate you, I forgive you for this. And there will not be enmity between us. I will be your friend. And in the final weeks of this man's life, his one friend in the world was the man who, 22 years earlier, when he was a 10-year-old boy, this man had tried to kill in an unbelievably cruel fashion. Now, imagine that we were to read this story, and as that young boy grew up, what he thought was, I'm going to get even with this guy. There's going to be justice. There's going to be vengeance. I'm going to find out. I'm going to pay him back. A lot of our movies are storylines like that. A lot of our books are storylines like that. But they don't move the human heart in the same way that love does. Love requires enormous courage. And what Chris did was utterly heroic. But it was something far beyond the reciprocity code, and that's why it inspires us so deeply. So the invitation today is look for those little injustice gaps when they come up in your life. When someone does something or says something and they hurt you, think about a person who has hurt you as we're not just trying to learn about forgiveness, but actually working on it. Think about an area in your life where there's been an injustice gap and then ask God for his help. Remember today, God, you have loved me and you are with me right now. Would you enter with me into this conversation as I am with this person? Would you help me to see them also, not just as someone who hurt me, 
but as someone who needs you like I need you and someone that you love like I am someone that you love. Today, learn to say no to the reciprocity code and yes to the love that is the foundation of the world. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Thanks for joining us. At Become New, we want to grow spiritually one day at a time, but it's tough to do that alone. So we're offering a little more support for anyone who would like to work on putting the content into practice. You can sign up to receive a text at the end of each week in this series, asking if you completed the here's how portion for that week. If you want, you can reply to the text and let us know how it went, or if you need prayer in taking those action steps. To sign up for the end of week reminder, just text the word MORE to 855-888-0444 and we'll put you on the list. As always, to receive the emails or video links by text, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. If you already signed up for the emails but aren't getting them, try checking your spam folder or better yet, you can add us to your contact list. Our email address is connect at becomenew.com. If you need prayer, we're here for you. Text your specific prayer request to 855-888-0444. There's a team of us who meet each weekday to pray specifically over every person who sends a text in. We'll catch you next time.